This is the Mac Studio. It's a device that has become an essential part of my editing workflow. And after using it every day for the past 17 months, I thought it would be helpful to share my long-term experience for those considering one of these, especially now that you can pick one up refurbished directly from Apple at a significant discount compared to last year's prices. Now we're gonna have two separate Mac Studio conversations. One is from my perspective where I've been using this specced out beast that's configured with 192 gigabytes of memory and eight terabytes of SSD storage. And then we have Robert based in Montreal who's been editing on a base M2 Max Studio. So it'll be interesting to hear both sides of the conversation. So definitely stick around for that. Apple hasn't updated the studio line in over a year. And I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but this thing still houses one of the fastest Apple silicon processors available, the M2 Ultra. And when pitted against top tier PC desktop processors, the M2 Ultra holds up pretty well in applications like Blender. Its performance in Houdini is competitive with the latest Intel Arrow Lake CPUs and AMD Zen 5 CPUs. But the standout factor is its speed in video editing applications like DaVinci Resolve Studio, which nearly halves rendering times compared to something like the Ultra 9285K from Intel. And this is all thanks to the super efficient media encoder engine built into the SoC, along with Blackmagic Design's optimizations. Now on the flip side of the coin, if you're a Premiere Pro editor, uh, the rendering times are on par with the rest of the lineup paired with an RTX 4090. Now I'm not claiming that the M2 Ultra is the fastest chip out there. Every platform, whether it's Apple, Intel, or AMD, has its own strengths and weaknesses. While you could build a custom workstation with top tier CPUs with the latest GPUs, the Mac Studio stands out for its compact form factor, its uber quiet operation and versatility. And that's what drew me into this thing. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. This is a 13 minute DaVinci Resolve project that I worked on recently. Uh, it is the Lamborghini inspired gaming PC build that I worked on. And um, it has a bunch of different codecs, including uh, footage from Sony FX3, uh, Sony A7S III. I've got some GoPro footage as well. and. I really went into pushing the image of these cameras to its absolute best. If you look at my color tab over here, I have a bunch of nodes uh, where I have my LUT and then I have my actual grade for the image. Uh, I've got, you know, a little bit of vignetting applied to the frame as well. I've also masked the car itself to adjust the colors just a little bit. And the system just handles everything so well. It plays back everything super fast. I shot this in 4K 24 frames per second. So as you can see, there is no drop frames. Everything's playing back real time, real fast. And if I can just go to any portion of this timeline while it's playing, it will just pick up from that point on without any hiccups. There are no drop frames. And I love how fast uh, and responsive uh, the studio is. And the best part is no fans. It's super quiet. I don't hear it. It's just doing its thing. And the interesting thing is I have a bunch of other applications running in the background. I want to take a break and switch to uh, Lightroom where I want to edit some photos for this project for socials. I can just go quickly make my edits and then hop back into Adobe Photoshop where I'm working on the thumbnail for this project and everything works super fast, super snappy, but it's not just those, right? I have a Chrome where I have a multitude of tabs that I use for research purposes. I've got messaging apps. I've got Excel. Uh, sheets that I use for uh, the benchmark charts. It's just all there in the background. I can just go back to it, pick up where I left and not worry about the system catching up to my task, which is great. I think 192 gigabytes of memory is a bit overkill for this setup because if you look at all of my tasks that are open right now, I'm only using about 50, 60 gigabytes of RAM. So that's basically 30% of the entire memory allocation. So it's really not a lot. I'm barely scratching the surface of what this machine can offer. So if you are a content creator, if you're in a production studio, if you have, if you're running a business where you're looking to invest into something like this, you don't need to go max out on a config like uh, what I have over here. Something with 64 gigabytes of RAM is probably a good sweet spot. I think you can even get away with 32 gigabytes of RAM, but I think Robert's gonna chime in later in the video to describe his experience. Before we move any further, a quick word from today's video sponsor. To achieve perfection, sometimes you have to change the game. That means finding something that embodies modern design with a refined, minimalistic aesthetic that can easily be adapted to reflect your environment. Sculpted with precision crafted weights for enhanced stability and style, whether you seek the perfect typing rhythm, a unique tactile feel, or unobstructed functionality, 
Drops CSD M80 is a TKL marvel that's sleek and bold, designed to dominate your workspace. Check it out down below. Now the next highlight of the Mac Studio is its form factor. It takes up such a small amount of space on my desk. Its compact design is beautifully crafted, which is no surprise coming from Apple. Uh, the full-size SD card reader on the front is a game changer. It just makes file transfers really convenient and it's also used to compliance, so it takes less time to offload media. You get four Thunderbolt 4 ports at the back for fast, easy chaining, 10 gigabit ethernet, two USB Type-A ports, HDMI, and an audio jack. And on the front over here, there are two additional Thunderbolt 4 ports. However, keep note that the two front Type-C ports are limited to Gen 2 speeds in the M2 Max configuration. And this is what my setup looks like powered by the Mac Studio. So as you can see at the back, I don't really have any hubs. Pretty much all the ports are utilized, but I want to emphasize those two Type-C ports, super clutch because I can easily plug in my or Rode wireless mics to offload audio files to my computer. Uh, I can plug in external drives, USB drives. It's super easy. I love the fact that it's right there. Uh, very convenient. In terms of other audio gear, I have the Apogee Duet, which is powering my condenser microphone that I use for voiceovers occasionally. And I have an external drive for archives. And in terms of my display setup, studio display from Apple, 27 inches. I don't mind the screen real estate. I wish I had something bigger like the Pro Display XDR, but that is just insanely expensive one day. This is a really cheap 19-inch Philips monitor. It's not the most color accurate, but I just use it for, again, that extra screen real estate to dump and organize uh, my footage, have different bins so I can monitor my audio levels, and uh, also just have different tabs in Chrome that I can just refer back to. Keyboard of choice is the Mode Design Tempo. I absolutely love this thing. It's super small, and I love the Obscura switches. Awesome. And my master choice is this really filthy Logitech MX Master 3, but I love this thing because the side scroll wheel is super nice when it comes to scrubbing through the timeline. As you can see, I try to keep my workspace clean and I think the studio allows me to do that. No one often overlooked benefit of macOS is how it smoothly handles updates. Unlike Windows, where updates can sometimes disrupt workflow with unexpected reboots or lengthy install times, macOS updates are generally unobtrusive and just easy to schedule around your work. Initially, I had some issues uh, with compatibility with certain applications like Discord, but recent updates quickly resolved those and I had to do them manually. I haven't actually seen this thing automatically update itself. I physically had to go in and update. That being said, I've had a few speed bumps with the studio. Sometimes when I leave it running for days or maybe even weeks, I start to notice slowdowns the moment I log in. There's been a significant amount of input lag when I try to key in my password. Animation stutter and working within DaVinci Resolve becomes, it becomes painful. Real-time playback starts dropping frames. The cursor movement is sluggish, but a quick reboot resolves everything. And I actually started reading into this. And from what I saw, a quick power cycle releases any lingering resources if an app holds onto RAM even after it's being used. Because remember, this thing is using a unified memory architecture inside. So it's essentially shared between the CPU and the GPU. So any resource hogging by one can impact the overall performance. So it is healthy to keep up those regular reboots. You see, I'm the type of person, if I'm working on a project that takes maybe a week or a week and a half, maybe two weeks, I don't usually turn on my system. I leave it as is, and then I come back to it the next day and then the day after to fine tune it and polish it. So. Experiencing this was definitely a bit of a, it was a downside, but you know, a quick reboot takes about a couple minutes, resolves the issue. So I thought it was worth mentioning. I do occasionally have issues with Audacity detecting my really old Apogee Duet audio interface. So that requires another restart as well. Some people on Reddit have also reported issues with the HDMI port on the studio. Basically it loses connection to the display resulting in uh, flicker or blinking in and out. Luckily, I haven't had any on my end. Also, the Mac Studio is designed to be stationary. You wouldn't really take this thing with you wherever you are and work on projects. Though, if you have a different desk setup at every place you go, sure. But generally, if you're someone who's looking for a workstation where you can take your projects with you wherever you are, you're most likely gonna shop for a laptop. And if that's something on the top of your list, maybe you should probably skip the studio and consider a laptop. Because sometimes I've had instances where I needed to bring a project with me to a meeting and you know the only option i had was to export it to an external drive and then import it to my laptop it's an extra step but not the end of the world now this last bit is really important and that's the lack of upgradability in mac studio 
I think it's a significant drawback for pretty much all the Macs that are out there right now where users who need flexibility and future-proofing just don't get it. It limits the lifespan of the Mac, especially for those who may initially underestimate their storage and memory requirements because when they need more and when they realize they need more, uh, they pretty much force into buying, you know, configurations that adds to the already high cost of investing into one of these. Just for fun, I actually decided to evaluate the trade-in value for this existing Mac Studio configuration. And Apple quoted me less than 20% of what it actually costs. What a joke. I mean, you're likely better off selling it privately as these things tend to hold their resale value pretty well. But yeah, uh, what's up with that, Apple? Now, I want to share this conversation to someone who's been using the base Mac Studio as their editing workstation for the past year. Let's just hear what the team in Montreal has to say. Well, I want to contextualize this a little bit first because our experiences on the Windows PC side are very much limited to using the Adobe ecosystem in our production. And a lot of the criticisms that you're going to see here are just as much about Adobe and their software and the issues with their software as it is for the Windows PC side. But anyways, when it comes to the Mac Studio and us moving into the sort of Apple ecosystem, there's been a lot of things going on over the last year, and I need to explain a couple of them. First of all, our experience really comes down to ecosystem optimizations, both on the software and hardware sides. I'll give you an example. Our production PCs were configured with 64 gigs of memory, and they struggled to even open some of our more complicated projects in After Effects, let alone edit them. Meanwhile, even with 32 gigs on the Mac Studio, we can open those same projects edit them at all effects that we could possibly want, at least at this point in time, without any problems whatsoever. Meanwhile, on the PC side, we would have needed at least 128 gigs of memory to do that. Another thing I absolutely need to talk about is rendering times, because every second matters in a production environment. Now, you might look at some of our benchmark numbers that we've shown in any of our videos and you see a minute or two saved and you're going to say, look, that's not a big deal. But the fact of the matter is that at the end of a calendar year, those are man hours that are just wasted waiting for rendering to finish. Now on the PC side, on the production PC side, we had some really crazy specs for the time at least on all of our PCs here and they were rendering beasts on paper, but the studio cut down export times by more than half, even in this base spec we're using. I can't tell you how valuable that is. If we're close to launch and pick up an error, re-rendering the video is a quick 10 minute or less turnaround time instead of a 30 minute slog. And it does that render output while being almost unbelievably efficient, especially in a semi idle state, just browsing the internet or working on Excel sheets. And noise, well, you can't even hear it at full load while the PC wasn't anywhere close to quiet. But beyond all of that, I think the biggest difference that we've noticed here is simply downtime. In the four months before switching to the Mac Studio, we did a little bit of a, a log. In that time, we registered 27 BSODs, 11 system slowdowns that required some form of troubleshooting. There were also a bunch of random issues on the PC. So we had losses of color profiles. We had USB ports stop working. It was just... Unfortunately, it was a mess. And some of those things, yes, were absolutely due to compatibility issues with the Adobe ecosystem. I mean, shame on them. They still have so many optimizations to do on their side. But there is also the Windows PC side of that. And the amount of man hours that we lost, and that includes changing components, updating the entire system to a new system, the list goes on. Like I said, the man hours that we had involved in that were titanic so far the Mac Studio has had zero crashes, zero system hangs. There has been the occasional, maybe once a week system reboot to clear out Adobe's cache because it seems to balloon in size every now and then. But other than that, it's been very, very good on the issue side. But that doesn't mean that the overall experience has been completely flawless. And a lot of those flaws just have to do with Apple's current ecosystem. For example, the lack of upgrade possibilities. Right now, we're at the bleeding edge of maxing out 32 gigs of memory. If we wanna to get to the next level of video effects, 64 gigs or more is absolutely a must. And without internal upgrade options, that would mean buying a whole new system. And that for any business is a big expense, not to mention 
super wasteful versus simple drop-in upgrades on the PC side. Also, yes, one terabyte sounds big to most people, but that internal storage is super limiting in our environment. But the studio does have those four Thunderbolt 4 ports in the back, so adding external storage is easy and pretty inexpensive too, provided you actually avoid Thunderbolt and stick to USB-C. So that's a pretty quick overview of the last 12 or so months with the Mac Studios here in the Montreal office. And I just wanna give you a little bit of a window into one of our conversations that we were having the other day. And that is, are we ever going to go back to Windows PCs for the editing needs of our production studio? And the answer to that doesn't matter who it's coming from. Doesn't matter if it's me, who's a diehard PC guy, or our editors who sort of swing both ways to PC and Mac. The answer was absolutely not, at least not now in the current state of Adobe programs on the Windows PC ecosystem. So I, I guess we're going to be sticking with the Apple ecosystem, at least for the time being. Anyways, back to you, Eber. Well, at the end of the day, I see the Mac Studio as a powerful tool, not just for content creation, but I think it applies to a range of disciplines like architecture, music production, motion graphics, and the list can just go on. I hope I was able to shed some light <laughs> on my experience with the Mac Studio. Let us know what you guys think. I'm Eber with Hardware Canucks. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Oh, and don't forget to spend responsibly.